Hello and welcome back to New York Gold. Today we're going to talk about breeding zebra fish, zebra danios. All right, so I picked up 10. I think they were 10 for 20 bucks in a school of like 200 in a tank. And uh, I put them in here. They were actually by themselves. Later on, I ended up picking up some green neons and some cardinal tetras and there's I think uh, barbs in there, gold barbs and uh, stuff like that. But anyway, there's a barb right there. There's one leopard zebra in there. I don't know if he's gonna come out or find him, but I'll let you know what I did to breed these guys. It really, you know, people say certain fish are easy to breed, you know, I don't believe any of that. I don't even know what breeding means. To get them to breed or to get them to breed, raise the fry, and then have a baby look like the adult. I mean, there's, I guess there's different definitions of breeding. I don't know. Maybe it's me. So I used a couple of different methods. This is just a regular little Chinese food container bucket. Some rocks, some so swatsa tang in there, some plants. Every morning I turn the lights on, they breed in it, then I take the bowl, take everything out, and then I float it. I leave a little water in from the tank and I float it on top, wait a couple of days, and there's tons of fry in it. I use my funnel method, I'm gonna link it to another video. There's a bunch of ways to do this, but this way works. You get a bunch of fry and then it only takes, I think, maybe like two or three days for them to hatch out. So I made one of these like Dean's fish room type of buckets here. I didn't paint the bottom, I didn't have a chance, but I don't know if you can see the little fry guys in there. So I had, the first batch I had 110 fry. I put them in here and I was feeding them some crushed up flakes. I'll show you how I did that in a second and then uh, I wanted to try to get them a little more protein and I tried the egg yolk where you mix the you know hard-boiled egg you take the egg yolk and mix in some tank water and you put it in there and then I uh, proceeded to kill 107 out of the 110 fry it, I, I don't know if I did it wrong or what obviously something went wrong so I'm a little afraid to use the egg technique I'm sure it works I'm sure people used it before but anyway I ended up with three all right I just take a little pinch I sprinkle a little bit, and then I do the rest under the surface. Try to leave a little cloud. It's the golden pearls. Yeah. That's it. That's so those three got a little too big. I was afraid they were gonna eat the fry. That were the next round, you know? So I put them in here and they started eating um after like ten days or so, maybe two weeks, they started eating the brine shrimp, so they grew super fast, and I was afraid they were gonna eat the new ones, so I put them in here. And uh, they got their own little place until they're big enough to go with the big guys. So food. Ugh. Regular flakes, that multicolored one. I got some granulas here or whatever. And then they say you can't get it fine enough, I don't think it's true. If you keep going, just when you, you think it's fine enough, you keep going and get it more fine. You just, you can work the hell out of it. It almost turns into like, it acts like clay, it looks like. It's, it gets like almost sticky, but you get it to like a cosmetic powder and they'll be, it'll be small enough for these guys to take. It'll work. I also ordered some golden pearls. I don't know if this is like eight or $10 worth. And this is even more fine than that. This is super, this is the five to 50 microns. And here's the reason why I like it. You see that protein content, 60%. If you look at, I think, is it infusoria or microworms? I think microworms are like 9.8% protein. This is like six times the protein content. And you gotta get, you gotta bridge that, that two weeks from free swimming so brine shrimp is, that's the crucial point. And the, the faster you can get them there, and that with the help of that, is uh, the better success you'll have. 
I am trying an alternate technique in here. I don't know if you can see these guys. There's little tiny fry in here. I don't know how many there are, there are a bunch. But I had a tank, I used just to just put um, just old plants, pieces and stuff like that. I would throw it in here. I don't even know what was in here. There's like a snail farm or some crap, but there's there's a heater in here, but there's no filter. This is a, like a Lucas Brett's uh, low tech, you know, just let it happen type of deal. So we'll see. I threw eggs in here. I threw babies and, and they're, um, you know, I still feed them. I feed them the powder, but they're, they're doing well. There's some on the glass. I don't know. It's so hard to film these things, but they're in there. Trust me. Let's see if I can zoom in. Mm. Oh, there they are. See? Hello, boys. All right. I have four keys to raisin fry. I think it goes for just about all of them. One is water quality. That's on you. Got to keep those water changes going and you got to keep that water in top shape. Next one is good food. You got to bridge that gap between egg and brine shrimp. Sometimes it takes a couple of weeks. High protein. Temperature. That's not a wiener. That's a thermometer. Got to have the temp. Got to be around 80 at least. The warmer that water is, the faster the fry grow. Got to bridge that gap. Genes, genetics, that's also on you. If you're breeding a certain fish and it just doesn't look right, it's twisted up or just malnourished or whatever, or fins, don't breed it. Don't breed it. Sometimes you get lucky and you get some good ones and the fry just pop for you. But uh, you need good genes. Try to find them. That's it. Cybred zebras. So soon those guys will be big enough to get the main population. Okay. That's it. Next time I think we're gonna do rainbows. It's next up.